<laughs> Woo! It is awesome. I'm so glad we went. Didn't go to work. We'd be sitting there going, God, we should have gone fishing. Hey, welcome everybody to the Salty Yak Podcast, where we talk saltwater, kayak fishing most of the time. I'm your host, Kerry. And I'm your host, Ryan. And today we are talking all about online kayak fishing tournaments, specifically the Salty Yak Kayak Red Fishing Tournament that is from May 1st to May 31st. I'm excited. So, uh. This is, I know there's a lot of us, I've only done two of these, and I know there's a lot of the people that listen out there that uh, have never done, one, they've never done a tournament, which is okay, two, they've never done an online tournament. So this is really kind of a way to ease into it if you ever want to try a tournament, and this is really kind of fun, because it gives you a whole month to go fishing. Yeah. We're not one, we're not doing one day type of deal. So you got a whole month to go fishing. The, what you do well, let's kind of back up here. So the whole purpose that I came up with this idea, I thought would be a really good idea. Because, you know, we've been doing these yak pack things where our local group in Houston, Matagorda, those guys, you know, they come down. You know, we've had, I think the last group was over 30, over 30 people there fishing. Was that the freeze your yak Yeah, off? that was the freeze your yak off. Um, but every time it's gotten bigger and bigger. So I said, hey, what about all these guys that are in Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and other places in Texas that can't come and do our little yak pack things. What can we do to get everybody involved? And I said, hey, an online tournament, month-long online tournament, let's do it. So uh, I've never I've never been a tournament director for a, an online fishing tournament. <laughs> uh, so there's things to learn, and luckily – I got a guy. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to talk to a guy here in a little while. So the whole purpose was just to get more of the Salty Yak community uh, involved. And, hey, just having some fun doing this. Maybe you win a little money. We're going to give some. Uh, there's going to be a weekly raffle where I'm going to give oh. some, some, some stuff away every week just on a random drawing to people who are entered in the tournament. Sweet. So That'd be cool. And uh, it will be the, if you win, it's more than your the cost of your entry fee. Trust me on that. Nice. So, uh, so uh, just to give you an idea to, to kind of tempt you here. Um, so it's online. So you go to Tourney X and uh, you make an account if you don't already have one. And basically what you will do is take pictures with your phone on an approved measuring device. And you upload them to Tourney X. And so we're able to have like a live scoreboard and you're able to, to follow it and every time somebody posts a new fish if it's bigger than what they've got on there and we'll talk so we'll talk more about how that works but there'll be a total of five fish that you can keep on the board and you can upgrade you can call the whole month so you can ch- keep catching bigger fish does so, it automatically update it for you or do you have to go in there and call one i set it up so it automatically does it for nice, you nice that's cool. so if you have a 21 inch and you catch a 21 and a quarter and you put that in there, it will automatically, if the 21 inch is the smallest one, it'll bump it out automatically call for you. That's awesome. It's uh, registration is open right now. So you can go to tourney X and just search for the salty yak kayak redfish tournament. There's a link on the salty yak Facebook page. If you just want to do it that way and uh, you can enter an entry fee is 50 bucks. That's not, that's not bad at all. So, well, here's how it kind of breaks down. If, just so I, I want to be transparent with everybody. 35 of it goes to the pot. 10 of it goes to our charity that, that we, cool that, uh, you know, taking kids, hunting and fishing, mm-hmm. uh, fallen police officers, and uh, fallen military heroes. Nice. So $10 of, of every entry fee goes to that. And $5 goes to Tourney X because that's what they charge us to host it on their site. But I think it's worth it just because... It's it's live. It's online. It's right there. You can look at it on your phone or on your computer at any time and yeah. see where you stand. And That's see awesome. If, you know, see who's in the leaderboard. So when is uh, the closing date? Closing date is April thirtieth, last day of April, at eleven fifty nine p.m. So tell Mariel 
he needs to he needs to sign in like May first, right? I saw he's he asked if he could fish it. Well, you know, he's, a, he's, he's a guy, but here's the, here's the thing. I don't you know we all have good days. You sure. have a, sure. you have a month to have good days. Yeah, right. I don't think I don't see. I mean, yeah, maybe he fishes a little bit more, but hey, I heard he's a good angler. So, Mariel, you you need to apply. You are put in for it on May first. To... Ah, there you go. Hey, <laughs> you know. Anyway, <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I don't feel threatened by a guy being in the tournament <laughs> at all. Um, so it'll be five redfish. So three of them have to be Texas slot, which means 20 to 28 inches. They've got to be in that slot. Okay. You can, here's the difference. The other two can be over slot. So that's where you can catch, if you catch a 32 or 34 or whatever, it you it counts. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not just the twenty to twenty eight thing. Yeah. So uh, that's how it works. Nice. Uh, so to get some more insight on how to do this, we're going to. I would say it's a mystery guest, but I've already been talking to this guy back and forth. We're going to give our buddy Rick McGee in South Carolina a call. He is the tournament director for PD Kayak Anglers Club, and he he gave me a little. It's not. Like the letter P, letter D. It's P E E, capital D E E, which is an Indian tribe in uh, South Carolina. So that's, that's pretty what name cool. Is. So let's give Rick a call. We'll get him on the phone and let's talk some more how to get involved in this online fishing tournament that we're hosting. Well, hello, Mr. Beeson. Hey, Mr. McGee. How's it going? Oh man, hanging tight, brother, hanging tight. I'm sorry, I told you I was gonna give you a text, but Ryan got me. Ryan got me talking, and uh, <laughs> I forgot. So hey, you yeah. know, it so, is what it is. So uh, I introduced you that uh, you are the uh, tournament director for the PD uh, Kayak Fishing Anglers. Club, Angler Anglers yep. Club. Yeah, and yep. you do uh, you do a lot of the online tournaments for them. That's that's all we do. That's all you online. do. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Well, I say all. It's all CPR. Yes. But we do. You know, all tournaments are CPR. Uh, some events are in person. You know, live events, and uh, the majority of our events are online. And so, but when you say CPR, even your live events are CPR. They don't bring. Yes. They don't. You don't bring fish to the scales. No, no. Around here, if you put fish on a stringer. Uh, if you're in freshwater, you're trolling for alligators, and if you're in saltwater, you're, you're trolling for sharks. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, we had uh, I know four people in saltwater marshes in our marsh here last year that got hit with four to five foot bull sharks. Golly, uh, with fish on the stringer. So yeah, the, the thought like, like you guys do with bringing fish in, you mm-hmm. know, for a weigh in, baffles me. I just it's a it's a so much of a foreign theory to me. Uh, I don't know. It's just a way of life over here, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know. it's, it's weird how, you know, just, what is it, 1,400 miles or so yeah. away? And, you know, it's everything is so much different. Yeah, we, you know, we're, maybe we're in the Stone Age over here. I don't know. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about, yeah, I'm a newbie. Never got into an online. Let's, let's, let's use Ryan here as an example. He's never been in an online fishing tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to pop his cherry. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a new one for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's kind of walk down the road for Ryan. You know, how do we do this? What's, what's the first All thing right. we need to do, Rick? First thing you need to do is go to Tourney X and sign up. Okay. Uh, pay your, your fee, get signed up. Um, you have the option on Tourney X to make a profile with, you know, you can put a cool little picture on it and do all this. And um, what's cool about that is once you make a profile on Tourney X, then you can go back and it keeps all of the tournaments you fish. You can go back and look at every tournament you've ever fished on Tourney X and see how you performed. Um, so you get signed up on Tourney X. Uh, you get your gear ready. The only gear that you absolutely positively have to have is an approved measuring device and your cell phone. Okay. Um, so you can take pictures and submit them to Tourney X. You probably already have the rest of your gear, all of your fishing gear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, then you sit back and you plan and you wait for the tournament to start. And um, once the tournament starts... You go out and you find the fish just like you always do. Nothing changed. 
The only thing that's different is once you catch your fish. That's when things, you know, for a new guy who's not used to fishing online tournaments, that's when things start going out of bounds and getting a little different. So that's where we're talking where you need to be taking good photographs. That's it. Okay. That's the key. That's the key. Because on an online tournament, uh, the tournament director, um, me for our club and you for this tournament, you're not judging fish. You're judging pictures. Um, when it comes down to it, you're judging the picture. Okay. Fish is, on, fish is the fish. But if the picture is poor, that fish won't count. <laughs> so, Give me, uh, when we talked about this the other day, give me some uh, – some things that you've seen in the past with, you know, made bad pictures. And so the picture was hard to read or didn't count. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, the, the big reasons that I see for fish for tournament pictures that, that get DQ, you know, that don't count. Um, if you're not paying attention and the, the fish's nose isn't bumped against the fence, um, because it's hard to tell in the picture, well, he's a half inch off the fence. We'll deduct a half inch from the, uh, measurement. You just can't do that. If mm-hmm. the fish's nose isn't bumped against the fence, it's an automatic DQ. Um, if he's turned the wrong direction, I've seen that a time or two. Is there a yes. reason that we have them turn them turn in left? All of, all of them have to be left and dorsal fin up. I don't know how that originated, mm-hmm. but every online tournament I've ever fished and every online tournament I've ever seen fished is that way. Mm-hmm. So. I'm sure there's a reason for it somewhere down the road, well, but um, maybe it's just for pure ease of the tournament director, so he's looking at all the fish the same way. Correct. I, I would think that would so, be a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I see a lot of uh, people who use the hog trough measuring mm-hmm. device and people that will – most tournaments that I've ever fished in, the only approved devices are hog troughs and mm-hmm. the catch products, yeah. catch company products. Mm-hmm. And um, around here – because we do, it's, your chances of catching a fish over 32 inches, especially a redfish, is, you know, pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. And so the saltwater guys around here, they will allow a homemade board if it is made with a with the 321 fish. Is it the 321 fish or fish 321 ruler? And what that is is a decal that you buy from this company, like 321 fish. And you make your board. Most guys, you can use wood. I made mine out of a uh, PVC board. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually made my, I've got one made out of an old PVC fence post that I ripped down. So it's got like a cradle. Yeah. So it works real well. And then you lay this sticker in there and it sticks. And this thing will lead out to 50 inches. And you can cut your board to whatever size. I've got mine cut to 40 inches because I just don't think I'm going to catch anything over 40 inches. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, and you have less board to handle. Yeah. And the reason they use that sticker is because it has a starting mark. So you know that as long as you see that starting black line is in the crease right there in the corner where your fence starts, you know that your readings are going to be accurate. Mm, okay. Um, I actually have a picture of my board. I'll, I'll text it to you later okay. tonight and so you can see what I'm talking about. Mm. But uh, boards like the hog trough and I think uh, Rapala makes one. Um some kind of a sliding ruler that has the little raised indents on it, but mm-hmm. they're not colored in. They're the yes. same color. Yes. You can't, you can't see those in pictures. Mm-hmm. That makes a tournament director's job a nightmare. Okay. So um, if you get a little bit of glare on it, you can't see, and you can't see a measurement, you can't guess. If you can't get a detailed measurement, the fish is going to have to be DQ. So you're saying, so yeah. you, would it be a good idea to like color it over with Sharpie, like a black Sharpie yes. go over it? Exactly. Take one of the fine Sharpies, not the super fine ones, but, you know, just the normal size Sharpie Mm -hmm. and go over those raised lines on the hog trough and the Rapala board. And uh, you'll have to keep doing it over and over because it will wear off. But before a tournament, yes, just go on there and put a little tiny black line so those things show up in your photographs. Okay. Because if you can't see the measurements, you can't judge the picture. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a hog trough. uh, Curtis found it. And, uh, it comes pre darkened, pre painted. Wow. So That's, it's uh, yeah. Mine's- there's actually one company sells a hog trough. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it actually comes with flotation in it yep. in the back of yep. it. Yep, same one, and, same one I found. Yep, exactly. And the lines are already on it. So yeah, yeah online fishing or something. I think is where I found exactly it. Yeah. fishing yeah. online. That's fishing it. online. That's, there you go. Yeah. There you go. That's mine it. doesn't yep. have the marks color, but it's 
So I'm just odd to do that with a but Sharpie. I actually had the question written down here. What do you do if he's bigger than your measuring device? Because I know a guy that's sitting here in the room <laughs> that he, he, it was hanging off the end of the hog trough. Yes. When he yeah. caught it. And um, we just guesstimated that it was 36 inches. Yeah. But generally, the, in a, yeah. Yes. In a, in a tournament format, you get the last measured uh, line. Yeah. Your hog trough is 32 inches. Yeah. And if he's hanging off the hog trough, that's a 32 inch fish. Yeah. I've got, <sighs> I've got a, uh, a yak gear that yak that floating yak gear ruler, and I think it goes out to forty. Mm, okay. It goes out to forty. I need to get, but that. it's not a cradle; it's just a straight piece mm. of board. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, and that works. I mean, as long as you keep the fish on it yeah. and it meets the criteria, <laughs> it's all, that works. I had a thirty-eight inch redfish on it that I couldn't even hardly get a picture of. <laughs> oh, that's I'm, I'm telling you, man. That's that's the big thing on my notes I have here, and you and I discussed this yeah. earlier, you know, a week or so ago. Is practice. Taking CPR pictures is not easy. It looks like it would be a piece of cake. And for some fish, it is a piece of cake. And some fish are going to fight you tooth and nail, and you are going to cuss them <laughs> and call them everything but, but a fish. All right, Rick. And, so we just caught a redfish. Walk us down yep. how you go through your process of taking this picture. Okay. What I do is when I land the redfish, I will take the redfish, and I have something. I have a product called a donkey leash. Mm -hmm. It's made by Cal Coast Fishing. Um, it's basically a little, mini, tiny fish grip little device that actually locks with ratchets, like a ratcheting lock, and it locks on the bottom jaw. I is there, clip him on. Is there a reason you have that now? There is a reason because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because I lost a bass in a bass tournament from my fish grips, um, and that fish would have basically cashed me a check in that tournament and oh. uh you're talking this fish was probably 17 to 19 inch fish and uh he would have cashed me a check in that tournament and when i reached down to get him to slap him had my board ready and my camera ready when i reached down and grabbed that leash on my fish grips i thought for a split second this is awfully light <laughs> oh <laughs> no he had bumped against the yak and the fish grips sprung open and he went back to his little stumpy haunt where he, from whence he came. So <laughs> it broke your heart. Oh, so that's when I started. Uh, most people don't realize what that little elastic cord on their fish grips are for. They just, it makes a great wrist strap to hold your fish grips, keep from losing them. But the reason for that is, is you can wrap them around the handles and then loop that ball back through it. And it keeps the fish grips locked closed so they can't come undone. Um, so that's what I started doing. I tethered my fish grips to my kayak where I could use that band to lock them closed. And then I found this donkey leash product mm -hmm. and this works so much better. I will clip the fish in this donkey leash. It's got like a three or four foot nylon coated steel cable. So he's not going to break it. Toss him back in the water, let him chill. Now I'm getting all my stuff together. I've got a little mental checklist. I'm getting my board, my identifier. And my camera, my phone ready. I'll get the board out, dunk it in the water. You always want to wet your board. It's just, you know, we're all conservationists. We all want to take care of the fish. Dunk the board, especially if you're using a metal board like a hog uh, catch board aluminum, because those things get hot in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So get my board ready, make sure I've got my identifier, get my phone ready. Uh, I don't tether my phone to my uh, life preserver or the, the kayak. I actually have a wrist strap that I use. So I run my hand through the wrist strap. That way, if my phone falls out of my hand, it's still on my arm. Once I get everything in place, pick up my fish, I lay him on the board and try to judge what he's going to do. Is he really going to be a butthead <laughs> and try to get off? <laughs> or is he just going to lay there? Because some, and especially redfish, redfish can be so chill. Mm -hmm. They can, they're one of my favorite fish to take a picture of because they can really be chill. So a lot of times they'll, and it seems like the bigger the fish, the more chill they are. So they'll just lay there, especially after they've been back in the water and had a second to kind of cool down and get that. I don't know if fish have adrenaline or not, but to get that rush out, I make sure all my criteria is met. He's turn left, his dorsal fin up, his nose is against the board. Uh, and a lot of times I'll leave that don't leash in his mouth because, or you can use fish grips because with that underbite jaw structure of a redfish, 
his nose is protruding further than his mouth is. So his nose is still on the board as long as whatever you're using to hold him with doesn't obstruct that view of his nose on the fence. Mm -hmm. You're golden. There you go. Get him to lay down, get his tail on the board. You can reach down and do the tail pinch, kind of squeeze his tail together to get that extra quarter inch because you'd be amazed at what a quarter inch difference will make. Mm -hmm. Um, And hopefully it'll stay there. If it won't, it sucks because you can't sit there and hold his tail pinch because then you're covering up his tail. Correct. And that's kind of a no-no in most of the tournaments <laughs> I fish. Um, then I start snapping pictures. Um, I'll take four or five pictures. Take the fish, still on the donkey leash, put him back in the water, look at my pictures. Make sure I've got a good picture where everything everything is legible. My ID is visible. I can read it. The numbers are clear. I can see how big the fish is. He's against the board. Everything's good. If all is good, I release the fish. If it's not, I still got my fish, and I can start the process over, take more pictures, and keep that process going until I get a good picture. There you go. As, uh, it's I've, I've done it personally. I've seen it a hundred times. You grab the fish, take a picture or two, throw the fish back in the water. Fish is gone. You look at your camera. Crap. I cut his nose off. I cut his tail off. I, you know, something's not right. Yeah. And now your fish is gone. So you're back at square one. Now, Rick, do you take the photo in the Turniex app or do you just use your camera and then upload it later? You can do both. I prefer to use my camera and upload it later. Um, I know guys that use the Turniex app. And they don't have a problem. Every time I've tried to do it, I have some issue arise. So mainly, unless I'm fishing a tournament, like a one-day in-person tournament, where I have to upload pictures as I catch them, I won't even upload until I get home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think when I, I the two that I did, that's what I did. I just yeah. waited till I exactly. got home and did I, it. I get home. I got a good Wi-Fi signal. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'm not in the bright sun looking at my pictures. Yeah. Trying to say, are they good? Are they not? I can crop my pictures to, you know, to make the everything easier for the tournament director to see. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take screenshots because then you lose your GPS data and then Turney X will not accept your picture. Mm, okay. Mm. Talk to like, us about that because I know you, you were, you were, we kind of mentioned about the GPS stuff. Tell yeah, us the importance the G- of that. Well, for some reason, especially it's really important if you're fishing in a tournament that has restricted waters, yeah. which I know this one is pretty much open. Yeah. Um, that way your tournament director, because when you can see where the fish came from, mm-hmm. when you take your picture, it records your GPS data and it'll actually show up on a map. And if there's a lake there or a river there or a marsh, it'll show it, show you in there, in that place where you took your picture. And, um, uh, I was in last year's both in tournament that we our annual Jurassic Classic, which is <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you it's the most fun you can have in a kayak, guys. It's a blast uh, fighting prehistoric beasts all day. Um, I took a picture and I was way back up in the river and had lots of overhead cover. And normally GPS is good, but for some reason my GPS data did not capture when I took that picture, and Turney X would not accept that picture. Hmm. Hmm. So I had to go to my tournament director at our, we had a live weigh-in, you know, kind of in person. Mm-hmm. And I said, here's this picture. Turney X would not accept it. So he actually manually loaded it into Turney X. So I still got credit for the fish. Good. Well, that's but, cool. But it's, um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, it's, it's weird it, that, that it's that way. So make sure your phone has GPS enabled and make, you know, take multiple pictures. And if for some reason GPS data didn't record, Turney X probably won't accept it. Hmm. But being this is an online deal over a month, that person could probably just send you the picture. Yeah. If it if it has the identifier in it, you being the tournament director, you could manually input that fish. Yeah, you know, and there's not a whole lot of private water where there's a redfish running around anyway. So yeah. Point, exactly. exactly. That's a good point. You know, we're not yeah. in the you know, we're not you know, if we were doing a you know 
a, in the, I think we're going to do that. I think we're probably going to do a, a, a bass tournament, maybe see how this one goes. Yeah. And then, you know, it's got to be public water. So that would be exactly. Important. That's so. where it really comes in, you know, to play. Mm. Cause then you, you, you get in, you know, Joe Bob's little private stock pond and nobody <laughs> else can fish it. So I might know a couple of places like that. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Um, what else about taking pictures? Um, well, you got your general, your basic criteria, mm-hmm. uh, your fish facing left, your dorsal fin facing up, away from you. Make sure your identifier is clear and legible. Um, watch out for sun glare. That's the big getter on identifiers. Um, if you put your identifier in a plastic sleeve, which a lot of people do, um, the sun can really glare on that. If the angle is just right, it can completely whitewash that identifier out, and your picture is no good. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Generally, and you can, you know, a lot of guys will write the identifier on the back of their hand in that, that way. When, yeah. And when they're holding their fish down, you can see the identifier. So, um, yeah. The That's picture, up to the tournament director whether he wants to accept that or not. The but picture, most places that, that I fish do accept that. The picture that you sent me of the redfish on the board with all those little things that you just mentioned, yep. I posted on the Salty Yak Pack. I and, saw that. And I, and I also made a just, just so all the posts about the tournament don't get buried on the Yak Pack page, I made a just a Salty Yak um, tournament page where the uh, rules yep. are right there, pinned to the top. That picture is there. And, you know, if people want to post practice photos and stuff, we can all kind of look at them and, yep. and go from there. Matter of fact, that's a great idea um, because, like I said, practice, practice. If, if Here's a, uh, my biggest piece of advice for guys that are going to fish this tournament that have never fished an online tournament. Take a picture of every fish you catch from now until the tournament starts. Doesn't matter what kind. Doesn't matter what it is. Yep. Just make up an identifier that's in the picture. You know, just have something in the picture that you're going to use as an identifier that has, you know, put three or four numbers or letters so it has so you can test the legibility of it. And take your pictures. And see how they turn out and see how frustrating this is. Um, <laughs> so let's talk. We've, we met, you've talked about it a lot and I had an email about it today. Let's talk about the identifier. So yep. the, the, the gentleman who emailed me said, Hey, you know, it'd be a good idea if you had any identifier. What he didn't know is when I set this thing up in Turney X, I've already put an identifier in Turney X. So yep. everybody that has entered, I have already preset the date and time that it will email you the identifier. Okay. Oh, okay. So you can either print that identifier and put it in a, in a little plastic sleeve, or you can write that identifier on the back of your hand. And as long as you're not covering the fish's head, yep. gills, eyes, when you're not, or you're not covering his tail, just lay it in the lay your, you know, you can put your left hand out there. If you're right-handed, and you can have it written on the back of your hand, um, you know, and just kind of hold him kind of, you know, like you're just lightly holding him down about mid body. And yep. that's perfectly fine for me. Perfectly fine. But that identifier it, it, is the, is this the unique exactly. letters and numbers that I have came up with for this tournament. That, so that stops people from sending you a big red fish that they catch next week. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It, that's the exact purpose behind that. And, uh, Word of advice, if you're going to use the Sharpie on the back of your hand thing, mm-hmm. I know that if you if you accidentally mark on your hand or something with Sharpie and you try to wash it off, I mean, you can use kerosene and it won't come off. <laughs> but, if, but if you're in a fishing tournament and you put that Sharpie on the back of your hand, keep an eye on it because it's going to come off. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's going to wear off where you can't see it. So keep an eye on it. Keep in, in, keep a Sharpie in the kayak for an online tournament. And it's That's not another little pro tip. Yep. And it's not, you know, it's not a, you have it on your hand and have the identifier too. you know, have it, you know, in your picture, what are you using to clip it to your board there? Um, it's kind of hard to tell in those <laughs> pictures that I sent you, but, um, I use a device that a gentleman by the name of Jim Shrunk invented, um, and it mounts to the catch boards. He calls it the flip it ID holder. It mounts to the catch boards and it's on a, like a piece of piano hinge Mm -hmm. and it's got a Velcroed plastic, like ID name tag holder and you put your ID in it and then you can adjust the angle. Like if you take a picture and there's glare on it, you can adjust the angle, take another picture and glare is gone. Ah, there you go. 
and you can the older versions velcroed to the board so i kept five or six pieces of velcro on the board and i could move that up and down the board wherever i needed it um catch products actually uh mr duke uh, west camp actually bought uh the idea or the patent or whatever from jim mm-hmm. and now catch products are is producing the the new flip it id holder version two that actually slides onto the catch board and it fits all of their boards this one holder fits all of their boards with no velcro required and you can slide it up and down the length of the board and position that id wherever you want it it's a mm, super super product yeah there you go so for all y'all that were wondering what identifier is, that's what we're talking about. Is it letters and numbers that are sent to you the day that it starts and it has got to be in every pick legible in every photograph that you every submit. single one, every one. Yep. So that's how we, that's how we keep people honest. So not that anybody's uh, going to be dishonest, but Hey, there you it go. Just, it keeps honest people honest. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, something else that, the guys who don't do this much is the actual picture taking itself Mm -hmm. on your phone. Um, Some little tips that I've picked up over the years. Uh, If you have an Apple phone, if you have an iPhone, you can actually adjust the zoom on your phone down to half zoom. You know, me and I I have an uh, Android. Mm -hmm. So my zoom goes from like one X up to three or four X on an iPhone. You can go below one X. You can actually drop down to 0.5 X. So you and can make it, it wider. Exactly. Oh. So, so hmm. that you can adjust that zoom and that way you don't have to hold your phone so high above the fin the fish to get your picture. Ah. And that, that makes picture taking easier. On an Android phone, fortunately it doesn't have that, <laughs> but you can go in and adjust the perspective on the phone. Like uh you know, three, four perspective. 9, 16, whatever they are. It gives mm-hmm. you four or five options. And then you can look at your fish or your measuring board, you know, like in your house and look at it through different perspectives and see which one allows you to hold your phone the closest to actually get the coverage that you need. And we're looking at taking these pictures as close as we can from top down, correct? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, you can take them, honestly, with the resolution on these camera phones now, mm-hmm. you can take this picture from way high up. And as long as all the criteria is met, mm-hmm. you'd be amazed. You blow that picture up and you can see every little minute detail. Yeah. You can see the scales on the fish. It's it's crazy, the resolution on these phones. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the what? other thing that I've discovered is actually taking the picture, you know, where to touch the screen mm-hmm. <laughs> to make the picture <laughs> take. Yeah. Because chances are this phone's going to be up above your head, mm-hmm. you know, above your eye level, and you're not going to be able to see the screen. Um, I'm assuming the iPhones have this, but I know my Samsung does. It has voice-activated uh, picture capture, and you can actually set the word that you want to use. I use the word capture. So I'll hold my phone back to where I think it is, and I'll just say capture. And you hear the phone click, capture, click, capture, click, and it takes as many pictures as I say capture. I will have to. I will have yeah, to look into that. Yeah. I yeah. Remember, there used to be a, like one of the side buttons would make it take the picture. Yeah. But I think that's yep. actually mine. I, I've got mine set up on a, a quick command where I can push the side button two times in rapid succession, and that automatically opens my camera. Ah, so I don't. Okay. I don't have to do any fingerprint or slide and all of that stuff. So yeah. I can yeah. Just you open w- it and say capture, and it starts taking pictures. Yeah, when hmm. you wear your buff and everything and your sunglasses and it's looking for the face ID, yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that didn't exactly. work so well. <laughs> the phone's like, who is this? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what else you got there, Rick? Yeah, I know you had a well, whole um, list of stuff we were talking about. Yeah, uh, let's see. Go down and tether your phone. Uh, yep. Definitely, you want some way to get that phone tethered because that is your lifeblood in an online tournament. Mm-hmm. Besides the fact that you're losing possibly a $1,000 phone in the drink, you also lose all of your fish. And your whole day has been and everything else your, and everything else. Exactly. You're, you're done. And then you got to go buy a new phone, which makes your day suck that much more. Mm. Um, I always carry, whether I think I'm going to need it or not, a battery backup. Yeah. I the saw little, that on your list. I was like, that is a, ba- that's a great idea. Packs, yeah. Yeah. The little, you can get them at Walmart for $10. I mean, the one I've got cost me, I got it on a black Friday sale on Amazon for like 26 bucks. And it will literally charge my phone six times before it goes dead. Yeah, wow. I got one of those. 
Hmm. And um, you know, a lot of guys that have power on their boats, no problem. If they've got a USB port, just carry a charging cable. You can plug your phone up and charge your phone. But what I've discovered is a lot of areas we fish are fairly remote. Mm-hmm. Not so much for the salt water. We've got pretty good coverage for salt water, but a lot of the freshwater stuff, we get back in the swamps and we have no cell phone coverage. And if you forget to turn your phone on to airplane mode, your phone sits there searching for a signal all day and it will run your battery oh, down. Yeah. No, it'll, it'll kill yeah. it. No doubt. It'll no kill doubt. it. Yep. Yeah. So that little little battery comes in really handy. You know, it's like, oh, crap, my phone's dead. You can plug it in, charge it right back up. Yeah, mm-hmm. no doubt. Um and especially if I'm fishing a tournament where I'm away from home and it's going to be a multi-day tournament, that's a must. Um, we talked about Sharpie. Keep a, keep a Sharpie on your boat. That's just that's quick and easy and cheap insurance. Yep. Uh, putting the lines on your boards if they're not covered, colored. Um, and something else, the fence on your board, like the hog trough you have. Mm-hmm. Notice the board's all one color. Yeah. It's hard to tell. When a fish is nosed up to that fence in the pictures, with all of that being yellow, white, whatever color your board is, there's two ways to fix that. One is to take that Sharpie and right in the crease where the fence meets the board, just draw a line right in that crease. And that gives you perspective on where the fence is and where the board is. It makes judging pictures so much easier. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Or you can take just a little detail and put on your fence. Um, any kind of little, just any kind of sticker shows, and put on shows the depth shows where it's at. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, it gives you a lot more per- perception, depth perception instead of that big yellow blob that is a fence and a board. You really, is it touching? Is it not? That yeah. takes all mm. the questioning out of it. Yeah. There you go. These are pro tips right oh, here, I man. Know, pro man. tips. Some, I like that. <laughs> oh, let's see. What else um, you got there? Let's see. I got, check down my list here. Left eye visible. Um, the reasoning behind having the eye visible is, you know, what happens to an old fish, yep. an old dead fish, his yep. eye gets cloudy. So that's where that came from. Um, the hand not covering the tail junction. We talked about that because of that yep. big cheating scandal that happened in the bass oh, tournament. Over here in tech, like right down the road from where we're at. Wow. You know, right down the uh, road. Watch for the sun glare because not only can the sun glare and wash out your ID, it can also wash out your numbers on your measuring board. So, especially if they're not colored in. Yeah. Especially if they're not co- colored in. So that's where you take a few pictures, put your fish back in the water, check your pictures, make sure you got a good legible picture before you release your fish. Um, uh, because I will tell you, it's you take – Having to DQ somebody's fish, and especially a fish that would put them into the money, mm-hmm. and then you put that on top of it's a buddy of yours, mm. it's hard. Yeah. It, luckily, the times that I've had to do it, um, the guys were man enough to like, hey, my fault, bad picture. But I've seen some feelings get hurt and hard feelings between friends because of that. And mm. that's where it goes back to you're not judging the fish. Hey, man, beautiful fish. You're judging the picture he took. Yeah, the, you, the angler, are responsible yeah. for for the putting up a good is, putting up it. a good photo that can be judged for the the appropriate length that it is. Exactly, so. it is the angler's responsibility to submit a legible photo. So. I mean, there's no way around it. So let's kind of walk down. I made a little. I use some of a. Uh, I might have. I wouldn't say embe- What do you What do you call it when you steal something from somebody else? It, not embezzled, but like in literature. A wire. You're acquired. <laughs> I, I acquired some uh, some online kayak tournament rules from somebody, and uh, actually, I looked at like I got yours Please from you, me. and then actually, you sent me a couple different ones. Yep. And I kind of went through them and kind of melded them in. So let me kind of run down the rules here, and let's kind of talk about them. And okay. anything that sparks your interest or th- you think that people need to know about here, have you read over the rules that I posted? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, a, we're not gonna go. I mean. Go ahead. Real solid. I mean, it looks real solid to me. You know, and that's the thing. You've got to, and you said it when we first talked, and, and I'm kudos to Rick. He called, he cold called me and said, Hey, I saw what you did and just want you to know I'm here for you. I've done this for over four years for our kayak club. And he offered his assistance, and you have been a huge help on uh, lining this thing out and getting this thing up and running as quick as I did. So without you, I'd still be like, 
floundering around <laughs> like trying to get this thing done. That's how I roll, brother. So let's just kind of run down here and just, just kind of talk about them. Um, so the tournament begins when the turn of, tournament identifier is released. So when you get that email, I've already preset the the time and date on May first when it be when it will be released, and the tournament ends on May thirty first at eleven fifty nine p.m. And yep. you have one hour after that to in, upload any picture that you have left to be judged because for for those ahead. hardcore guys that are out yeah. there at midnight getting their last fish. Dude, I love the night fish. I Me love too. It, it, when we were doing, uh, when I was doing one of the tournaments, I, I did a bunch of night fishing. Didn't catch any big fish doing it, but I, I love going night fishing. Uh, all fish must be caught alive and on conventional rod and reel using artificial lures. So there's no live bait, no dead bait. Um, you know, you can't spear fish them. <laughs> 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 Got to be a conventional rod and reel. Trolling people is, actually, go ahead. People gig redfish around here. Can you believe that? Well, you know, in Louisiana, it's illegal to bow hunt them or bow, you know, bow fish them in Louisiana. Yeah, I mean, I, that that blows my mind. I mean, but hey, that's, yeah. that's some Cajuns, but hey. <laughs> I mean, but I think the the limit for flounders twenty five or something over there, and there's no anyway, they're crazy. Oh um, wow, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But you know, hey, I mentioned Louisiana. Rick is coming <laughs> to pack in October. No can't kidding. Freak, yes, he's, I, he's. I can't freaking wait. Dude. That's awesome. He's coming to stay with us in the houseboat and fish over there. We, we we lined this out months ago before when I yeah. when I booked the houseboat. Nice. So you guys like, have messed up, man. Y'all <laughs> have got a South Carolina hillbilly coming in. You guys have messed up. Well, you lived in Texas for like twenty years. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no. it's all we, it's all good. Oh, and by the way, falls. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the mesquite trees are the mesquite trees are blooming. I confirmed that there the other go. day when I went to the farm. <laughs> and, um, and 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 my pecan trees are, are budding, so <laughs> cold weather is over. You mean your pecan trees? That yeah, those two. Yeah. <laughs> all right, back on the trolling <laughs> is permitted. No more than two lines in the water at a time. Uh, a lot of our guys, you know, we we're freshwater redfish are available in this. So we got some guys in San Antonio. And that's how they usually catch them is trolling, which I'm I'm okay with. So I'll tell you what, man, between spots, it, mm-hmm. just I never change spots without dragging a bait behind me. Never. You just never know. I have mm-hmm. caught some of my biggest redfish that way. Yeah. You just never know when uh you know if you're like daddy said, if your line is not in the water, you ain't you gonna, catch, gonna a fish. catch a fish. Exactly. Right. Um photos taken before or after lines in, which would be whatever time that uh, you get the identifier in lines out which is the 31st at eleven fifty nine. 59 yep. uh, if you take any picture before or after that it is out so we'll, we'll use and the the time that's stamps some, yeah that's something else that i neglected to have on my notes make sure yeah. your time stamps are turned on on your phone yeah we make sure you know, it should be correct is, but yeah th- yeah that is an option you can turn that off and some people do some people will turn off their location services and all that for privacy reasons mm-hmm. So make certain that your location services are on and your timestamp is on when you take your picture. Just so, for that rule you just covered. So that brings up an interesting thought there, Rick, because we had this conundrum earlier today. Because Rick texts me, he goes, are we talking 6 p.m. Eastern time or Central time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all of these times, so my Florida guys, my Georgia and Alabama guys, all of these times are Central times. Okay, so keep that in mind. All yeah. these times are going to be central time because we're in Texas, so that's what we're going to yeah, roll exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. You must have a U.S. Coast Guard approved PDF, must be worn at all times while you're fishing in this tournament. Love not it. not Love that you have it, but you got to have it on you gotta have while you're it fishing. On. You know, there's times we'll pull up and like have a have lunch or something, and you might take it off. You know, we're staked out or anchored or we pulled up. It's okay, but if you're if you're casting a line, you need to have you've got to have it on. There's no there's no the, the two, or but the two clubs that I'm a member of here in tournaments, one requires it on board mm-hmm. because that is the only Coast Guard requirement. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's also a requirement of if you choose an inflatable PFD, you have to have it on. That's a Coast uh-huh. Guard requirement. Uh, okay. Um, but the other club, my the Low Country Club, the guys I fish with down in the Charleston area. Uh, those guys, you, they, you have to have it on for a tournament, period. Yeah. I think if this is, anyone sees you without a PFD, you're DQ from the tournament. Yeah. Uh, same here. Same here. Um, if you're going to fish at night, and it's okay to fish at night, in Texas, you have to have a 360-degree white light. So 
You've got to be yep. compliant with the, the state law and you have to be compliant with the state law, with the, whatever state you're fishing in. Yep. So if Louisiana requires 360 white light or South Carolina yep. does. Yeah, we do here. Yeah. So whatever they require for your kayak to fish at night, if you're going to fish at night, then you got to be compliant with that too. Um, all fish must be hooked, fought and landed from an approved watercraft. And we kicked this one around back and forth about say, do you allow waiting in, you know, or do you not allow waiting? Uh, you know, I know there's lots of places here in Texas, you know, where that's what guys like to do. You know, they'll, they might oh, take yeah. their kayak somewhere and fish, but then they get out and, and wait for a little while and get back in the kayak. But I figured it's a kayak tournament. You ought to fish and catch them from the kayak. <laughs> from the kayak. There you go. And, and you being the tournament director, that is strictly your call. Yeah. So. Well, you know, that's why it's a, you know, it's a redfish tournament and it's a kayak tournament because that's what I like, you know, and, and that's, it. that's the thing about us though, but we're all in the same boat because we like doing the same stuff. So exactly. what, so what is an eligible watercraft? And again, this was kind of up to me. So here's what I went with. All participants must use and fish from a kayak or stand up paddleboard. Kayak or stand up paddleboards may be paddled or pedal driven. Electric troll motors with less than 50 pounds of thrust may be used. So uh, I thought about throwing Again, a canoe in there, yeah. but uh, I think we just go with can, with kayaks and stand up paddle boards if to, for those that want to do that. Yeah, and again, that's your call. There's a big, big rift between clubs around here with the motor thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, um, some, yeah, some, some I can allow see motors, that. some some don't. Uh, but there again, strictly up to the director of the trail series. Yeah, so, um, you know, I have I've seen uh, kayak tournaments where it's paddle only. And I've seen kayak tournaments that uh, were, well, I say it would be, I mean, like there was a Hobie owner's turn, tournament, so it was pedal only pretty much. I guess you could have a Hobie that's a paddle. Um, but then I know some, you know, that it's, there's like no electric motors whatsoever. And I personally, I will it, that's a boat. I mean, at that point, you know, you got to, re- in Texas, you've got to register it as a boat once you put an electric trailer motor on it. Same so, here. But, Start paying taxes on that bad boy and everything. You know, if you want to do that and, you know, it, maybe you you enjoy that or you're physically challenged and you need to have a little extra, I'm okay with that. But uh, that's just not me. I'll never have one. So, But I will allow them in the tournament. So not a problem there. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the scoring and uh, measuring your catch. And which you did a great job going over that. But let's just run over this right quick. Must uh, only use commercially made device uh, made for CPR's tournaments. So we're talking about a commercially made measuring device for fish will be allowed. Examples, catch measuring board, hog trough with the blackened measurement increments, a check it stick. I think the one that I have, I bought a hog trough, but also have the other one. I think it's a yak gear and I'll post pictures of all of this on the, uh, the salty yep, yak. Yep. Yak gear makes one. And, uh, but it's like, it, like I said, I think it's like 40 inches too. So, uh, but yeah. I'll post pictures of that stuff. As long as it's commercial made, well, I guess I, mean, I didn't. Well, I, you, I didn't really think the only, about the other one. Go ahead. The um, the one I was telling you about the yeah. the, the three two fish three two one uh, decal. Mm-hmm. Um, there again, strictly your call. Let me send you a picture of the one that I made for me, and I've made several for people in our clubs mm-hmm. because we use those whenever we fish for monthly species that are bigger. Yeah. So like when we do gar and catfish and yeah. big fish. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, this time of year, could you catch something bigger than 32 inches? It's a possibility. Um, so, I mean, so let me send you a picture of that and, you know, kind of show you how it's put together. And then that'll be up to you if you want to decide that this is an option. It, it costs $10 from the company. Mm-hmm. You, you, you order it online and they ship it to you in a couple of days. I think they're out of Florida. So, uh, uh, making the board is a piece of cake. Anybody with any rudimentary skills can make a catch, you know, a, a bump board. With a bump fence. board with it, yeah. Yeah, and then you just butt this ruler right up to it. And I'll, I'll kind of point out to you, you know, as long as this black line is against the fence, the, the measurements are accurate. Yeah. So, okay. this is actually a board that the IFA uses. So, it's IFA approved. There we go. So, All right, we'll look at that and, uh, yep. and, uh, get a, uh, get an idea of that and we'll go from that there'll be some more stuff uh stay tuned to the to the salty yak pack page or the uh and the tournament page that we have because uh, we'll put i'll put it on both of those um 
Fish tails can be displayed naturally or in a pinch position. Any thoughts on that one? Get that extra quarter inch, baby. Well, <laughs> that's what it boils down to. I had some other thoughts too, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave it at that. So you can you can leave it natural. <laughs> And whatever whatever it is, it is, or you can pinch it, and then whatever it is, it is. So you you get to you as the angler get to decide in that. A uh, fish must be facing to the left, dorsal fin up, nose touching the bump board. Uh, the lipping device and fish grips can be used to maintain control of the fish, just like you talked about, as long as it's not between the fish's nose and the bump board. Uh, Another little quick pro tip there. Um, if you, as long as you're not fishing with some monstrosity lure, like mm-hmm. if you didn't just catch one on a badonka dom or a <laughs> spook junior, you know, some big top water bait, if you're using a paddle tail, a little spinner bait or something like that, you can actually leave that bait. You can leave the hook in his mouth. You can mm-hmm. leave that fish hooked. Give yourself some slack line. Leave that hook in his mouth. Take your picture. That way, if he gets ornery and he does a nose dive off of that board, you still got that fish hooked. Mm-hmm. Still got so, it. As long- as long as it's not obstructing the view, just like the, the fish grips, yep. you're golden. So that's something that a lot of guys do here. And tournament identifier has to be in the photograph. We talked about that. So here's yep. one here's one thing we didn't talk about. So all measurements will be rounded down to the nearest quarter. So what yep. that means, if, if you've got a fish and the tip of his tail is 20 and an eighth, that's a 20-inch fish. 20 inch fish all day long so if it doesn't touch 20 and a quarter it gets rounded down to whatever that whatever it is yep that is standard practice out here anyway yeah so it's standard practice i was talking to to some of the other guys that that have done this and they're like yeah that is and we talked about the photographs being taken directly overhead um oh here's another one part of the kayak or sup must be in the photo submitted. Must be in the photo. Yeah. yeah. So like you're, you're taking the picture across your lap, like in the picture that you see here. Um, so it's got your kayak has to be in or your, or whatever your, the sup, whatever you're fishing off of part of it has to be in the photo that you submit. Yep. We had a, a last year when we did gar long nose gar, mm-hmm. one of our fish of the month, I caught like a 43, 44 inch gar. And, um, he was, bigger than I wanted to handle in the boat. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like this thing start thrashing around and dump my big behind in the lake. So I beached the boat and got out, but I put my measuring board on the front hatch of the PA. Mm -hmm. That way when I took the picture, the boat was in the picture. There you go. Qualifications. It's good. There you go. I had the same thought when I was doing BTB catching redfish and I was fishing for that one tournament. I was like, if I get a big redfish, I might just have to like drag him in shore, take the pictures and then, and then release him and not, not try to I, try to I take see. pictures of him out there on the kayak in the surf. So I that, see guys take pictures of 50 pound blue cats on their boat in the middle of the Tennessee river. Mm. Um, mm. I'm, I, I don't have the cojones to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we talked yeah. about <laughs> photographer or photographs must be taken directly overhead. Possible measurement of the tail must be clearly visible in the photo submitted. It's responsible for the angler responsibility of the anger to make sure all measurements are clearly visible in the sm- in the photo submitted. Uh, we already talked about that. We talked about covering not the head and the eyes. Uh, any fish that appears uh, mutilated, dead, may be subject to rejection by me. Yep. Uh, and then uh, the tournament committee. L-F-A. Yeah. The, <laughs> the tournament committee will review all photos and verify the validity of every catch for the, the angler's uh, rank. You know, and that was something I liked about Tourney X because when you upload your photo, you get to put what you deem is the, the, the proper length for it. Yeah. And then the tournament director comes back and verifies that. And you just see your picture and it'll say unverified underneath it. And then once yep. the attorney director checks it and he checks verified, it just, you know, it says, it, now it, it says it, verified. It, so it turns green. It actually exactly. turns green to let you know that it's good. Exactly. So, um, <clears throat> talked about the lines out. Oh, a tie. If a tie is in total inches will be broken by the biggest fish caught by the angler in the tie. So if me and Ryan have a tie and he's got a 36 inch fish and I got a 32 inch fish is our two biggest fish. He wins. If it, the fish is the same length for both anglers in the second tiebreaker, then the angler who caught the biggest fish first, based upon the go. time stamp in the photo. Time, time submitted, exactly. Yep, there you go. 
So. That helps people from sitting on fish, That from just sitting on them and yep. some people call it sandbagging or whatever. But it, personally, I like the live leaderboard. I oh, like yeah. looking at it and going, hey, that's cool. Yeah, people, that's I what I want. Do this. That's what I want. Yeah. I don't want anybody waiting until the end. I want, you know. Catch you know as you catch them, submit them, and let's you know let's let's have fun with it. You know, and, and, and that's the whole thing. You know, let's we can get everybody from that has redfish, Texas to you know North Carolina to that uh, want to be involved because it's just not open to the to the yak pack. It's open to any kayak angler out there. So spread the word. If you got people that uh, I know, Rick was talking about. He didn't know if he was going to tell his kayak club about this. <laughs> that he was going to kind of hold it to himself so that Dude, he <laughs> I, I, I've got some absolute hammers out here. <laughs> I mean, these guys are sticks, man. I don't, I don't know if, you, if y'all want these guys to come play in your yard. Or oh, not. I don't know. This, it's all fun. It's all fun. Well, you know, cause we were having the conversation before we turned them, before we called you, uh, one of our friends who's a guide is like, Hey, can I get in this? I'm like, I don't, yeah, you can get in it. I'm not, I don't feel threatened that you're in this. I'm like, I'm, yeah. Cause I'm, I very well feel like I could probably catch just as big a fish as you can. So, yeah. And I got a I month mean, long to do it. We're not talking about a one day tournament. Exactly. So. You know, f- for me, it's probably going to be a one or two day tournament. Yeah. Um, because I've got so much going on that month. Um, it's going to be our monthly species that month is going to be catfish, which is one of my absolute favorite months. And I'll, I'll be out catfishing a lot. So I'll get one or two days to go chase reds and then that'll be my tournament. But, so tell us, and you told me about this. Tell us about your species of the month tournament. We, um, a lot of people due to work schedule due to kids activities, just life in general, can't make it to our tournament trail events, our live events. So, we do a species of the month where we pick a different species every month and we do a 30 day or month long, however long the month is online tournament, just like we are doing here, except it's a one fish tournament. It's <laughs> biggest, fi- biggest fish wins. Huh. That's crazy. And, you have 12 different species. Yep. So um, go, go ahead, go finish it. I'm sorry. I'll interrupt you. Go ahead. So I think we did, uh, let's see, January, we did uh, crappy. Or it would be crappie where you're at. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. January, February. What did we do in February? Hell, it's only we've only had three months so far. Actually, redfish is our fish this month. We're doing uh-huh. redfish this yeah. month. Last month was white perch. Um, uh, and like you and I talked, that's not crappie. Yeah, it's that's not crappie. Species. That's an actual species. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a little white bass without the stripes. Mm-hmm. It's basically what it looks like. And, um, yeah, we do 12 different – every month is a different species. It's – I didn't think I would enjoy it. We started it last year. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much, but it is really – it makes you get out of your comfort zone. It makes you learn. You know, a lot of these fish I've caught before as mm-hmm. bycatches when mm-hmm. I'm fishing for other stuff, but it makes you learn how to catch these fish, where to go look for them. Um, it was really fun. I enjoyed it. And then you all have a – you have an angler of a year uh, from the points yes. from the year, right? You get points for every, like the winner gets 200 points. Um, second place gets 198 points right on down the board. And um, at the end of 12 months, the combined total, whoever has the most points is the anger of the year and gets a big trophy. And um, then for our online events, is this, I mean, our in-person events, our trail series, um, we have a total of six events and you earn points just like that for finishing mm-hmm. first, second, right on down the line. And then the top 10 anglers qualify for the championship tournament. And then it's like everything's erased. Then it's winner take all in the championship tournament. And the winner gets a belt, like a wrestling championship <laughs> belt. That's funny. And, and he gets to keep it on his mantle for a year. And then he has to hand it over to the champion next year. Oh, so it's like so a traveling it, trophy. It yeah. just gets passed around. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. We've uh, talked about uh, making a traveling trophy for the greatest kayak angler ever when we do that little tournament thing that we do, <laughs> do there. So, yeah, I, that, I think the, the species of the month is just absolutely cool. That's cool. So, um, the guys down in the Low Country Club down in Charleston, they do the same thing, but because they're on saltwater and they're in Charleston, for Christ's sake, they alternate. Freshwater, mm-hmm. saltwater every month. There you go. We are we are mainly freshwater since we're in the PD region, which is we're about 70, 80 miles inland from mm-hmm. the coast. Um, 
So we do three salt. We do redfish, flounder, and trout. We do those three species, but everything else is uh, freshwater. freshwater. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We try to mix it up, keep it interesting. Rick, thank you for coming on, buddy. You have been a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure that uh, we will still be calling you going, hey, what about this? <laughs> hey, what about this? <laughs> Hey, I said, call me anytime. I'll answer any questions. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on the podcast. Uh, since I found this podcast and you know, kind of became a long distance member of the mm-hmm. group, and I just I sit around and I get the notification like new episode. Yes, I got a new episode <laughs> I listen to. Well, with, so, with with any luck, I get home tonight. I'll uh, don't hold me to it. I'll try to get it out so you can listen to it in the morning. If not, it'll definitely be out Wednesday. So, uh, it, it has become my go-to in, in the car, you know, to and from work, to and from fishing trips. There's probably not a single episode I haven't listened to three or four times. I mean, <laughs> just, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And dude, we, we love having you on the podcast and uh, you will certainly be, uh, be back on it for sure. Uh, one more. Th- I just saw something on my notes. One more thing. Here's another little quick tip for guys. You know, um, you know how these fish, especially flounder, uh, like to do that little flip and look at you and kind of flip you the bird and like later tater i'm gone yeah they're really bad about that on the board uh and i've had redfish do it too like i say some of these redfish are chill some of them want to get a little feisty <laughs> here's something you can do take your landing net like that picture i sent you mm-hmm. see how the, the board is you know the, the fence of the board is against the left side of the kayak yeah take your landing net and set it vertically behind the fence on your board eight to eight nine times out of ten when these fish jump off the board they go head first so which means when they flip off the board they're going to go over the left side of the kayak i've done that before and i've had fish flop off the board and just like a three-pointer man swoosh right into the landing net i'm like haha you're not going today get back on the board uh-huh. so that, that may save some may, that may save some fish for some people hey uh send me like the uh, the web address for that donkey leash yeah, and uh, we'll okay, po- yeah, we'll I'll, post that up yep. on the uh, all right on the the yak pack and on the uh, on the tournament page because uh, I know a guy or two that might that might be interested in ordering a couple of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so, cool. there, I know I, there'll be people that <laughs> after they listen to this they'll be looking <laughs> for it too. So uh, I know all of this to a beginner. This sounds like a lot, mm-hmm. but get on the water, practice it, take some pictures. You can actually set up a practice tournament on Tourney X where they can actually submit practice pictures and you can judge them. Um, I didn't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, I no, I did um, not know. I did not know. Yep. And um, so just practice it. It'll become second nature. But all, when it comes down to it, the big thing about this is get out there, fish, enjoy yourself, and have fun. Be mm. safe. Have fun. Just like you guys say, wear your PFD. Somebody at home loves you. They want you to come home. Um, get out there. and That's what it's all about having fun and just while everybody's listening hey guys good luck i hope y'all get out there and wear them out i hope you catch a new personal best here we go rick thanks for coming on buddy i will be talking to you later buddy thanks rick hey, appreciate it take care guys <laughs> hey bye uh, bye-bye a wealth of knowledge yeah no kidding man Jeez. i'll have to re-listen to this thing like three times oh to, yeah to, to, get so it, to get it all so uh if we have piqued your interest and you're still hanging on with us Tourney X, the Salty Yak Kayak Redfish Tournament. 50 bucks. Go enter. Start taking your practice pictures. I will look at the practice tourney and see what that is. But if nothing else, let's just start posting pictures up on the uh, the the, tur- the little tur- the Salty Yak Tournament page that I start, Facebook page. Y'all go find that, and let's just start posting some, uh, some practice pictures up there. You know, make you a little... Uh, you know, make you a little, uh, identifier to put in on a card or, or whatever. And, uh, let's just, let's have fun with this. Yeah. You know, we got, we've got a little over a little less than a month before the real one, but, uh, I know I'm going to go fishing Thursday. So I will be, uh, I'll be playing the game and, and taking some pictures and doing that. Mm-hmm. So is there anything else? Nope. Yeah. Y'all go to Tourney X, register for it. Let's start taking some pictures and, uh, Let's have fun with this. All right. Kick it back to you. As we say, guys, always wear your life jacket. Somebody loves you, and we want you to come home too.
Yep. All right. We'll be talking to y'all guys and girls later. Thanks, guys. Never get out of the boat. Absolutely goddamn right. Unless you were going all the way.